I'll start off here. Okay. I, I thought this is a, a game where the team showed great resiliency. Um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the demons of our of our past bubble games, you know, were, were staring us right in the face. Luca hits two big free throws to send it into overtime. Um, we make big plays in overtime. Tim Hardaway made a huge shot. Uh, Dodo makes the big free throw, and we get the key stops when we needed them. So, real proud of the guys. I mean, this this you know tonight, these last two games, Clippers and Milwaukee. I mean, you got two of the best teams on the planet, and um, you know this is great experience for us in preparation for whoever we're going to play. Great, thanks. We'll start there in the room with Brad, and then go over to the Zoom. As you mentioned, a lot of superlatives to go around. Uh, let's start with Luca. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he only had two turnovers and zero in the first half, and that's two straight halves. We had no turnovers. Can you just discuss his his development? Yeah, look, the guy's a he's a phenomenal player, and he's getting better. Um, Really by the hour, by the day, uh, you know, the efficiency numbers against these two past teams are really remarkable. Both teams will turn you over. Both teams have guys that, you know, will deflect and, and get their hands on a lot of balls and stuff like that. But, I, you know, I was I was most impressed with his leadership throughout the game. You know, it, had, it kept a real calm demeanor, kept guys playing during some tough stretches. You know, his conversations with the officials were short and to the point. And, uh, you know, the officials listened and, and you know, we moved on. And, and the leadership aspect of it is is uh, really in the big picture is, is just as big as, as these ridiculous statistics that he's putting up. Thanks. Um, OK, we'll start here with Saad. Hey, Rick, I know it's kind of hyperbole that, that Luca sees everything, but the way that his assists were coming today, does he kind of literally see everything on the court? Yeah, he, he, knows, he knows where everybody is, not, not only on offense, but defense. And that's, that's the sign of a, you know, of, a, of, a, of a savant type guy. I mean, you know, I played with Larry Bird. He could see everything like that. You know, I had the privilege of coaching Jason Kidd. He could see everything like that. Um, you know, Luca's Luca's in that same mold. You know, he's just he's got a different body type. He's got a different kind of game. But um, when he draws when he draws the attention, um, you know, somebody's going to get a wide open shot. And you know, there were there were a lot of instances tonight where we had we had great shots that didn't quite go in. Um, otherwise, these numbers could have been even more ridiculous. Okay, thanks. Next up will be Tim Reynolds. Rick, I know it's just been a week and a half in here, but everybody's scoring numbers, every team just about is way up. Does that surprise you? And, and why are we seeing numbers this good from guys that haven't played for five months? Well, you know, that, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, I, I think you could explain it. Uh, or, or theorize it a few different ways. The level of excitement the players have to get back on the court as a team, you know, you know, maybe you've been here a week and a half, but we've been here for a month, you know, and we were, we came from a situation at home where players could only do individual workouts, you know, with a coach with a mask on and rubber gloves. Um, you know, when you walked in the practice facility, you had to clean your shoes, um, you had to fill out a fill out a form. You had to take your temperature. You had to do a lot of things, and that was uh, before serial serial testing began. Um, so a lot has a lot has gone into this. Um, I don't know what the fouls are now. I know early in the um, in these Orlando games there were you know like an average of twelve or thirteen more fouls called per game. Uh, to me, it's just the level of aggression of the um, of the players. Um, and the fact that you know the, the skill sets of NBA players are are increasing exponentially by the month. I mean, it's just hard to get harder and harder to guard these guys. You know, so um, you know, and, and there's a, there's a high level of, of enthusiasm. The the closeness of the games has been crazy to watch. You know, um, it's just been uh, you know it's been a very special time here, um, even though it's been quite unusual. 
Okay, we'll do one more with Tim McMahon and then Dorian will be up next. If you have questions for Dorian, queue up, please. Eric, what was your reaction uh, specifically to Luca's pass between his legs to Maxi for the dunk? I clapped. I, I applauded. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, look, at it. the sign of a great player, a truly great player, is the ability to pull off something like that against a team like Milwaukee that gives up virtually zero in the paint. And that leads to, you know, an end one. I mean, that was a huge play in the game, too. So, um, you know, we're just – we're seeing more things all the time. And, uh, you know, Luke is not only a great basketball player, he's a great performer. And, you know, it's – you know, I, I'd pay money to watch him play. I mean, I, I don't say that about a lot of players, um, but he's, he's really special.